In this investigation, we will be looking at the resistance of a wire and how that resistance changes with the length of the wire. Now, for this experiment, we're not going to be looking at copper wire because its resistance is too small to measure easily, but a particular high resistance wire called nichro. So you'll need a meter length of this wire taped down onto a meter ruler so we can easily, easily measure how long the length of wire that we're testing is. So, first thing to do is to set up the circuit. Now we need to be able to measure both the current and the potential difference across the wire. So, first off, I'm going to put the voltmeter to one side and just build a series circuit with the battery, the ammeter and the resistance wire that we want te to test. So, first connection, battery to ammeter and then I'm going to connect the ammeter to one end of the resistance wire. Now to do this I'm going to use a double length cable so that I've got plenty of reach. I'm not struggling at all to make sure that the whole circuit is connected when I'm trying to take the measurements of the longer lengths of wire. And I'm going to just clip on the crocodile clip at the end on the zero of the meter ruler and that crocodile clip will stay there then for the entire experiment. Next up at the other end take the second crocodile clip and I'm going to clip this onto the one meter end of the meter ruler to start with but this crocodile clip is going to move during the course of the experiment so that we can test different lengths of wire. Now I'm going to then just finish off by connecting that up to the other terminal of the battery again using a double length cable so that I've got plenty of leeway, I'm not struggling for reach on the wires at all. And I've now got a series loop from the battery to the ammeter, through the resistance wire, and back to the battery. Last thing to do then, so that I can get my measurements of potential difference, is to connect the voltmeter up, last two wires, into one terminal of the voltmeter, and then I'm just going to connect that into this junction here and with the last wire connect the other terminal of the voltmeter up to this junction and that completes the circuit for this experiment. Now I'm going to start taking measurements. I'm going to take measurements starting with the meter end or 100 centimeter end and work my way in towards my shorter range. I'm going to stop at 30 centimetres because if you are testing a shorter piece of wire, the resistance of such a short piece of wire is too small, the current gets too large and this means that the wire heats up and once the wire starts heating up its resistance changes and that throws out the results and ruins the quality of the experiment. Okay so starting at the 100 centimetre end, first reading I have a potential difference, a voltage of 4.71 volts and a current of 0 0.08 amps. Then all I need to do to test the next length is unclip the red wire here, leave the other one in place and just clip it on at the 90 centimeter mark on the ruler. Do make sure that the piece of wire again is taut on the meter ruler, otherwise you're going to end up with more than 90 centimetres of wire and that would introduce an error to the quality of your results, throw out all of your readings. At 90 centimetres now, I have a ammeter reading still of 0 0.08 amps, but the voltage has dropped. So, my current is still 0 0.08, my voltage has now dropped to 4.63 volts as the resistance of a short piece of wire is lower. Really simple now, just sliding the crocodile clip along to 80 centimetres. The voltage reading now drops again to 4.51 volts and the ammeter reading has risen to 0 0.09 amps. Slide the crocodile clip along again to 70 centimetres, 
the voltmeter reading now has dropped again to 4.41 volts. The ammeter reading has risen to 0.1 amps. Move along to 60 centimeters and we get a current of 0.12 amps and a voltage of 4.26 volts. So move along to 50 centimeters. We've now got a voltage reading of 4.09 volts and a current of 0.14 amps. At 40 centimeters, we have a voltage of 3.88 volts and a current of 0.16 amps. And for the last measurement at 30 centimeters, the current has risen to 0.20 amps, while the potential difference has dropped to 3.54 volts. All that follows from there is to calculate for each length the resistance of the wire. To calculate the resistance for each length of wire, we need to take the two readings we've got and divide the potential difference by the current. Following Ohm's law, that will give us the resistance at that length. And once we have the resistance at each length of wire, we can then plot a graph of resistance against length to see the relationship between the two. As soon as you have finished taking all of your measurements, the most important thing to do is to disconnect the power supply from the circuit, stop the current flowing. That prevents any overheating. It's also a good idea in between each reading to disconnect the circuit so that the wire is not having a current flowing through it all the time, which leads to more heating, which changes the resistance of the wire. So it's important to make sure that basically the circuit is connected for the shortest time possible. So having plotted the resistance on the y-axis, length on the x-axis, we draw a line of best fit through the middle of those points. Ideally, it should be a straight line of best fit with a positive gradient. Ideally, it should go through the origin, through zero, zero, 